Good afternoon. Welcome to the United Supermarkets Arena and the introduction of the 19th head basketball coach in Texas Tech athletic history. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here this afternoon. I think I would be remiss if we did not start our time together this afternoon in recognizing the Texas Tech men's basketball team. That is what it is all about. And I appreciate these young men and their teammates for their perseverance through this basketball season. They kept fighting each and every night. And then as we entered this process and this search, they handled their personal business. They handled their team business in a first class manner. And I just uh, appreciate their communication th throughout these last six to eight weeks and just much respect and admiration for who they are as people and the way that they've uh, handled this adversity and this process that we've been through. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We're going to kick off our time together uh, today by hearing from the boss, the leader of Texas Tech University, Texas Tech Athletics. He's the best president that an athletics director or a head coach could work for. I see Coach Kitley and Coach Gerlich both shaking their heads. Coach Stone, Coach Tadlock, appreciate all of y'all for, for being here. But the uh, best president that an athletics department could ask to work for, he's always there, accessible, uh, counsel, wisdom. I appreciate his leadership each and every day. Please join me in welcoming Dr. President Skuvenek. Thank you, Kirby. To everyone, thank you for being here today to help us welcome Coach McCaslin, CC, their children, their family. Uh, you know, CC and Coach, what a special place this is. And this place is special because it starts with the students, our alumni, so many supporters. You all make Texas Tech a very great place to be. I want to thank our AD, Kirby Holcutt, Regent Womble, Coach McGuire, Lorenzo Diossi, for the job they did on this search committee. This is one of the great jobs in college basketball. And this is a very coveted position in the best conf basketball conference in the nation. It's a great job, and they brought us a great coach. So. Coach McCaslin, I want to congratulate you and the University of North Texas on the NIT championship. <clears throat> that only added to an already very impressive resume. We have a great coach, Dickey. He and so many others since then spoke to the character of Coach McCaslin, a man who is genuine and authentic, and who takes care and cares for his people. These are the characteristics of all of our coaches. I couldn't be more proud of them and the job they do with Kirby. That is a great benefit to our student athletes, but also the reputation of this university. So coach, I, with all Red Raiders, join you, CC, and your family, and welcome you to Texas Tech. We are so delighted and excited and pleased that you're here. And we're looking forward to many, many years of success. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Skuvenek. 
I, I too want to thank uh, a few people before we get started and introduce uh, Coach McCaslin. Um, we've got a couple of members of our Board of Regents that are with us today. Uh, first, recognize the Chairman of our Board of Regents, Mark Griffin, that's with us. Regent Griffin, thank you for being here. Appreciate your counsel, communication, willingness to always answer your phone at uh, all times of the day throughout this process. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate you. Uh, see a couple of our new Board of Regent members that are also in attendance with us today. Uh, Regent Clay Cash from Lubbock, Texas, and Regent Tim Colt from Midland, Texas. Thank you all for being here. You know, President Skuvenek mentioned the uh, group of men that I had the privilege of working with through this process that led us here today and to introduce Coach McCaslin. Uh, Dusty Womble, Dusty, thank you for your continued engagement, support, leadership, communication. Dusty's out of town today uh, with a trip that could not be rescheduled, uh, but he was so excited uh, about the appointment of Coach McCaslin, and I know he's, he's, if he's not watching today, he'll watch this uh, press conference tonight. Uh, Coach McGuire joined us every step along the way. It was awesome to have him involved. Y'all know what he's done to the Red Raider Nation, how he's unified us. To, to have Joey McGuire at the table uh, was truly special and very uh, brought great uh, counsel and perspective to, to this search. We're represented today by uh, the First Lady of Texas Tech Football, his much better half, Debbie McGuire. Debbie, thank you for being here today. Jonathan Boutros, our CFO, uh, also was an integral part of this search and provided great uh, insight and perspective, kept us organized and moving forward. I know Jonathan's here, but Jonathan, thank you for the work that you did throughout this process and throughout this search. The last member Needs no introduction. I'm going to go off script here for just a minute. Norrence Odiasi. What? Yeah. So I, I did not ask Norrence for permission before this, but Norrence, you're pretty good at being on the spot. Come on, man. Hey. He was an all-star through this process. He brought great perspective, counsel to this. Couldn't be more excited. He's a Red Raider for life. Norris, you want to get everybody fired up for us here today? No, thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go, there we go, keep going, keep going. All right. No, he literally, like, he put me on the spot. I had no idea about this, but no, I just want to say for me, this guy that we got is it. Like, he's it. For 31 wins from where he came from, through the process, you know, for me, being a player at my university, obviously an honor to do this, to be on a committee to find someone like this, I'm like, uh, I'm trying to find somebody that's us, that understands who we are, the culture, the vision, the together, the family, the community, everything he is, it's everything we need in a coach. So I'm extremely grateful to have him here, his family here, and just to have these guys here. So thank you, guys. Nor it's just a small token of our appreciation for you and the time that you gave to us through this process. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. I love it. I'll give you all a quick story. We were on a, a Zoom call, just the committee one evening, and we were talking about availability and uh, how, when we were going to reconnect next. And so we started, we said, uh, we'd like to get back together tomorrow and continue the conversation. We said, Norrance, uh, what's your schedule tomorrow? And he said, you know what? So Norrance is still playing professional basketball for the G League with the Dallas Mavericks organization. Norrance. Norris said, you know what, we have practice tomorrow. He said, but I'm available all day. This is so important to me. My organization knows what Texas Tech basketball means to me. I'm available all day tomorrow. So then on the Zoom, we go around and we went to Mr. Womble. We said, Dusty, what's your availability tomorrow? He said, how am I supposed to respond after that? He goes, I'm available all day too. 
So uh, if Norris was willing to miss practice to, to be with us, uh, we were going to make ourselves available. This committee worked hard. We evaluated over 35 candidates, and we interacted in some manner with 23 uh, candidates for our men's basketball job. There were multiple sitting Power 5 coaches who initiated interest with us, and I just want to say not only thank you to the committee, but thank you to each and every one of you that are here today. You are Texas Tech Athletics, and you're the heartbeat of what makes this athletics department go. So thank you for pausing your day to come and celebrate the next leadership of Texas Tech basketball. And I want to make no, yes, thank you for, for being here. And, and I want to make no mistakes about it about our expectations for Texas Tech basketball. What are our expectations? We, we were over at the Womble just a few minutes ago, and, and I was there, and Terry and Kelly Crowfoot and I were visiting, and Mark Bain was, was visiting with us, and Lee Lewis was there, and we were reminiscing about four years ago tonight being in Minneapolis, and I see a lot of your heads shaking. That is our destination to be back at the Final Four. And it's just ironic that tonight is that game. And that is where we're determined to get back to and get back to the Final Four. We're, we're not going to take a back seat to anyone in this country. We've won here, and we expect to win here. And we expect this basketball program to be playing in late March and early April. And I know Coach McCaslin has those same expectations that, that we do. So how do we get back there? How do we get back to the Final Four? There, there's a couple of things that you have to do to get back there. And I think there's two special ingredients that we have at Texas Tech that no other program in this country has. Number one is our fan base. And each and every one of you here today to welcome Coach McCaslin. You're our season ticket holders. You're our Red Raider Club members. You're our Matador Club contributors. And, and you provide two things. You provide the resources to operate a program at this level and you provide attendance in this building that creates an environment that is second to no basketball program in this country. And that's a critical element for Texas Tech basketball to get back to the Final Four. And the second element is Raider Riot and our student group organization and what they bring sitting in these chairs right here that you're in each and every night the ball go, goes up in the air that student engagement that student excitement is second to no place in this country and, and we need our students to continue to to engage and support these young men in, in this basketball program we've got the Womble Basketball Center the best in the nation for player and team development we sit in one of the nicest arenas in the country for competition we have a group of air raiders, a group of business leaders and businessmen who contribute financially, and a number of them are here today that allow our coaches to travel all over the country to recruit student athletes, to bring the very best student athletes here that will have the experience like Norrence spoke to just a few minutes ago, and then ultimately a head coach who's going to take us back to, to that journey. And, and before I introduce in a few words about Coach McCaslin, I, I want to uh, recognize the team behind the team first. And I want to show you, you know what I've learned over the last number of days? The, the number of connections that Coach McCaslin has with the Red Raider Nation and, and with this university are tremendous. And, and it starts with, he is a brilliant man because he married a Red Raider. So, Cece, would you and your, your, your kids come up here just for a minute? So, Cece today came and she shared with me a sweatshirt that she has worn every morning for coffee since 1996. True story. True story. Cece was a soccer player here, and I think Coach Stone is going to have you CC Deck with soccer gear fixed up for you from here on out. But we wanted to present to you your jersey, number 15, which was her number. So I just learned as well, Grant's sister, Katie, went to Texas Tech. She's a Red Raider. 
I learned as well, Grant's grandfather played football here at Texas Tech in the 1950s. 48 to 52. 48 to 52 was a quarterback here at Texas Tech. And their oldest daughter, who unfortunately couldn't be with us here today, Maris, she is named after one of your, one of your teammates from Texas Tech soccer. All right. Ever since we made the announcement that Coach McCaslin was our next head coach, I've had every high school basketball coach in Lubbock reach out to me to recruit Jet to come to their high school and uh, play for them. So, Jet, we wanted to go ahead and give you the jersey. Welcome you to Texas Tech. Jersey, their daughter, is a rock climber and competes in rock climbing. How impressive is that? She competed in Houston this week. She had the second highest climb in her competition this week. But Jersey, we're so proud that you're a Red Raider, and we want to say welcome to you. Last but certainly not least... You, you've probably seen him on TV through the NIT journey, usually with his shirt off, but pumping the crowd up. Beckett, you got a red jersey on. We wanted to give you a white, and we want to say welcome to Texas Tech. From his first Zoom interview that he had with the committee, to each subsequent uh, follow-up conversation and interview, Grant McCaslin stood out. Each call that we made related to Grant McCaslin, consist consistent themes emerged. Themes of leadership characteristics that will get us back to the final four. Consistently, each call that we made referred to his high character, his ability to create winning teams, and an overall toughness of his program. At every school, that Coach McCaslin has coached at. He has had that program's top winning percentage at each program. Everyone talked about his tenacity, his work ethic, his drive, but most importantly, his heart. He shares our expectations that we referred to a few minutes ago. He was in this building for the first ever basketball game that was played in the United Supermarkets Arena. He sat by Coach Dickey and was the director of operations that evening, so he's come full circle. Red Raiders, we like to believe in ourselves, don't we? We like to believe in people that are willing to bet on themselves and are confident in who they are. In the last two years, Coach McCaslin has declined opportunities to be a targeted candidate at another Big 12 program, has declined a couple of opportunities to be the targeted candidate of two SEC programs. And we know that the Red Raider Nation is going to continue to invest into our basketball programs, into our facilities, and our student athletes as we move forward. And we have the right man to lead us as we move forward. Great days are ahead for Texas Tech basketball. Please join me in welcoming our new head basketball coach, Coach Grant McCaslin. Kirby, don't lose that sweatshirt. <laughs> Let's make sure that gets on with us. Um, now, what a blessing. I, this is wild. When I walked in and I knew this would be an awesome environment, I didn't expect to see all the familiar faces. This is, it feels like a family reunion. It really does. Um, and, I, and I'm not so sure I shouldn't just sit down and let Norrence talk for the rest of the time. That's some juice. Um, and I, I just want to start with this because I've got a chance to spend a few days with them. And these guys down here have waded through one of the worst, um, 
waiting periods to, to get a new head coach. And I wanted to tell you guys how much I love you and how much I appreciate you being patient. No, I mean this. Because God's called us all to something. And I know that our purpose is to pour our hearts into you guys every single day. And we love winning, don't we? We love winning. But the only way you can truly win is if you love people with all your heart. And I believe that. And these guys have been tremendous in the few short days. And people can talk about, hey, you make all these plans. And I told them we felt like this was an order. And I have to give a, a shout out to uh, the UNT basketball team. And obviously, you saw the success of the NIT. But I told these guys when I first met with them that I felt like you, you can't have a divided heart. You have to pour your whole heart into it. And the administration there, Dr. Smatris, Ren Baker, Jared Mosley, our staff, Ross Hodge, Maddie B, AC, we just had a, a great group that believed in each other. But I walked into the locker room with these guys on Friday, and I told them that I will give them my whole heart. And I wanted them to, to find what they, what they love and what they want to do. And when they find that, we'll be able to love and win here at Texas Tech. So if you would bear with me, but I, I, I genuinely wanted to start with these guys because I love you and I can't wait for this journey that will end, hopefully, on this night very soon. We'll get to that in just a second. But first of all, I wanted to tell uh, President Skubanek, Kirby Hokut, how thankful I am for this opportunity. You can see the passion and love for this unbelievable university through this process. But honestly, I've always followed and loved it. And when we got to this process, when I walked in the room, and got a chance to give the biggest bro hug to Coach McGuire. That was violent. That had some juice to it. And then, obviously, my first step into the Womble, and I got to meet Dusty Womble, I realized that we have the absolute best basketball facilities in the country. And we do. And then to hang out with Norrence. And Norrence was giving me a hard time, I'm not going to lie to you. He was grilling me because you could see the love that he has for Texas Tech basketball. And I knew this was important to him, and I knew if, if I had to answer to anybody, it was going to be Norrence, and I wasn't going to screw this up. So it was such a blessing to go through the process because more than anything, what stood out is we're here to win championships. And the people are the difference. We have great facilities, but the love of the Red Raiders is the difference. So I want to introduce a few people. If you'll hang in there with me for a second. My family's here. And this um, is a family, and it will be for all of us. And I see several family members here that aren't sitting down here that we have done life with that brings me great joy. But I first want to introduce my mom and my dad down here, uh, Roger and Linda McCaslin. My mom's the toughest person I know, fact. And my dad has been to every practice for the past six years. Yeah. And you should really applaud him because he hasn't tried to coach our team. That's even more applause. But the blessing of this, he's 100% he's excited and a little bit sad because everybody at all of our practice waves to Papa Mac. So, Dad, I love you, and you can come to any practice anytime. Also, I have my mother-in-law and father-in-law, Bill and Randa Dillon, who love to yell at refs, so they'll fit right in here in Lubbock.
I don't cuss at refs, but maybe he does. Um, and then my brother here, uh, Jeremy, I've got another brother, Josh, and his family, and my sister, Katie, is here with her daughter, Josie. They got two twins, so let's give them a round of applause. And then, and then you met my crew when they were up here on stage. Uh, Amaris is back in college. She had a test today. She's, she's way smarter than me. I'm so proud of her for not skipping a test, kind of. Um, my son, Jet, my daughter, Jersey, and my son, Beckett. But the real reason I'm standing here with you today is because of my amazing wife. And y'all know this. This is the truth. And I'm going to give you a little story. I'm going to tell two stories. They said I have 15 minutes. I don't know if that's going to actually happen. So if anybody wants to put me on the clock, good luck. Um, but I, I, I do want to say this. When I finished playing, fellas, don't go look at my stats. Because I watched more than I played. But when I finished playing, CC and I had actually gone to rival high schools in Irving. And we went to two proms in the same limo with different people. Did you get that? And when we were playing in the Big 12 against each other, I would go watch her play soccer. She would come watch us play basketball. And when I got done playing, I intentionally called Coach Brashear, who was on staff for Coach Dickey, and begged him to work camp. And he thought I was begging him to work camp so I could be a part of the basketball stuff, but really I was begging him to work camp so I could come see her. And two years later, we got married in 2001. But I am so thankful because Coach Dickey offered me the opportunity that forever has changed my life and given me a direction and hope that I could only imagine. And he paid me $9,000 to do it. And I paid for school with that, too. So there's a part of this West Texas, and we lived in Midland, and I've driven, I've driven a bus of junior college players all over West Texas. So there's not a town I haven't seen, and I'm not so sure it was very safe, because reading a stats, as you know, reading a stats and eating McDonald's and driving the bus after a loss in Borger, Texas, probably isn't real safe. But the blessing is we won more games than we won. And that opportunity of being at Midland Junior College in 2007 has shaped who I am today. We absolutely love West Texas. Y'all know we flew in on Friday, right? Why are you laughing? We flew on Friday and everybody was like, sorry about the, you know, whatever they want to say. And you know what I said? I would have not recognized the place if it wasn't for that. If you love it, you love it. Would you agree with me? You love it. Because there's a grit that you got to have and a love and a passion that's real. So at, at, at Midland, I have to thank a few people. Ron Jones gave me the first opportunity. Coach Shannon Hayes was the head coach. I was his assistant. I got the opportunity with Forrest Allen. And my first year as a head coach in junior college, I told these guys this. We went to the national tournament, and I thought it was great. We beat the number one team in the country in the first round. In the second round, we got beat on a tip dunk at the buzzer. And that moment changed my life because I said one thing. We'll never play for anything other than a national championship. So with that expectation in mind, that began the journey. And two years later, in 2007, 25 years from the first national championship with Spud Webb and Mookie Blaylock, we won a national championship. And that started a, an unreal journey of believing the end at the beginning. And that's why when we talked, we had a lot of dates we were looking at. And I asked them for this date. Do you know why? Because I believe we can win a national championship at Texas Tech University. I got the opportunity to work with some great people. Scott Drew, Jerome Tang, Paul Mills, who was there on staff, 
That was a beautiful journey to go with them on, and some of you know those names, and some of those will be excited to play. But believing, giving, and competing is what we'll do every day here at Texas Tech. This is the toughest environment in all of college basketball. And we believe that the toughest team wins. Yeah. And if, and if we expect to play hard every day like you would hope us to, believe, give, and compete, one thing that will happen in, in the United Supermarkets Markets Arena is we're going to have the wildest student section in all of college basketball. And I, and I got to give some thanks because I see Coach Myers there and I got an opportunity to see this place grow into something that's remarkable. Coach Smith, the Knight family, and Chris Beard and Mark Adams, and I, and I mean this sincerely, those guys have poured their hearts into Lubbock and Texas Tech. And I have so much respect for this building on game day and what you all have poured your hearts into. And I want to help us bring a national championship to Texas Tech. And my question is to the students. We got to have a celebration when we win these games here. I haven't crowd surfed in my life. As, that, this will be a first, but I'm tempted to, to stage dive into the student section and crowd surf after wins. Do you guys have a better option? No. You'll take it? All right, I love it. Because that, and, and you, you all know this, and there's been such a significant investment in this, but that's the part that I love. And that's the part that I hope to build and hope to be a part of what you've already built in this, in this beautiful arena is a championship. And I commit to pouring my whole heart into making that happen. Wreck them. Thank you all for being with us. Our best days are, are yet ahead of us for Texas Tech basketball. We look forward to celebrating many victories with you all in this arena. I know Coach McCaslin is going to meet with the members of the media uh, in the media room in just a minute. And I think it's tradition we are going to finish with the Matador song. <laughs> 